master's program here at Harriman Institute. And we are very happy to offer this lecture to you through the Ukrainian Studies program here today. I'll just mention a bit about the format for today, and then I will introduce our speaker, and then I will turn over the floor, so to speak, to Professor Hundorova. So today we are live streaming on YouTube as well as a webinar on Zoom. And I wanna welcome everyone. Thank you for attending and um, encourage you after the presentation, after the lecture, to write your questions in the Q&A if you are joining us in the webinar format on Zoom and um, in the question comment if you are on YouTube. Um, and then we will, um, the, the, the professor will answer and or address your comments or questions during the Q&A portion of our event today. So we are very, very pleased to host um, a renowned professor, uh, Tamara Hondordova. So I will, I will um, let you know a little bit about her background if you are not familiar already. Uh, she is the principal research fellow at the Institute of Literature, NAS of Ukraine, and an associate fellow at HURI, Harvard's Ukrainian Research Institute. Currently, she is a visiting professor at Harvard University. Professor Hundordova is a member of Penn Ukraine. She's the author of Lesya Ukrainka, Knigo Sivili, just published in 2023, The Post Chernobyl Library, The Ukrainian Postmodernism of the 1990s, published in 2019, Transitna Kultura, as well as other books, uh, too numerous to mention in a brief biography. Um, she has many articles and chapters on the subject of modernism, postmodernism, feminism, postcolonial studies, and the history of Ukrainian literature. Professor Hundorova has taught at Princeton and Harvard Universities, at Toronto University, at Greifswald University, Kiev Mohila, and Kiev National Universities. She is a former Fulbright Scholar, visiting scholar of Monash University, and a recipient of the Yatsik Distinguished Fellowship, a Foreign Visitors Fellowship at Hokkaido University in Japan, and a fellowship of Phil Philip Schwartz Initiative of the Alexander von Humboldt Siftung um, Organization. So with that um, impressive biography, we are again, very, very pleased that you are willing to speak with us today um, and to do so over Zoom. So now I will uh, turn over the floor to Professor Hrondordova. And um, after she speaks, we'll have a, um, we'll have a, a period with a Q question and answer. Thank you again for coming, Professor Hrondordova. For, for your kind introduction, as I'm, I'm very pleased to 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 join uh, to be today with you and uh, uh, to have this opportunity to share my my thoughts on on this uh, topic on provincialization of Europe, and um, I'm especially. Um, very glad to be to be back and to um, uh, at uh, at Harriman Institute, which it was a mine a host institution um, in uh, when I was a Fulbright scholar. So it's 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 wonderful. It's it's, it's my honor. It's a honor and pleasure to be back. Um, Mm, uh, I would like to, to present today um, uh, my topic on provincialization of, of uh, Europe on, on the eastern front, frontier from As Asiatic Renaissance to Ukrainian Occidentalism. And I uh, try to share my... Uh, have you seen my, my presentation? Uh, no. No. Have you shared oh, screen? Oh, yeah, okay. So um, I'm sorry. Um, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you see share screen uh, on the bottom? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, mm. Wow. Well, uh, mm, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I just to share. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. And here. Lucy? Yes. Yeah? Okay, yep. okay. So, mm, uh, could you could you just put it in um the yeah. format right exactly yeah, okay okay so um uh, so I, I okay finally let's start 
Uh, one of the founder of uh, one of his uh, interview recent interview, uh, uh, one of the founder of colonization theory and uh, subaltern studies, uh, Depesh Chakraborty, has uh, has stated that he he see uh, he understand the colonization primarily as a movement uh, within academic circle. And uh, it is aimed at uh, uh, revising the so-called uh, Western narratives and canon, and um, that represent uh, the highest achievement in literature and culture in general. Of course. In the academic sphere, the colonization implies a change in the canon and reconsideration of the dominant Western narratives. Um, actually, Chikraborty is the authors of the uh, authors of this idea of colonialization of Europe insist uh, that the Western canon discriminates against other culture and the Western historical narratives is, I quote, variation of only master narrative that could be called the history of, U of Europe. Uh, in other words, um, the Eurocentric historical optics, according to him, does not take into account the distinctive not European histories of other regions. Uh, moreover, Europe uh, acquires a, new, a universal meaning in the office of historian and philologist, as he and he said, and the provincialization of Europe means the recognition that there is, a, that there is not one, only one Europe, but many Europes. I quote, there are there and still are many Europes real, historical and fantasized. Um, actually, Chikrabarti speaks of uh, Eurocentries from the perspective of India, but from within Europe, uh, but from uh, within Europe itself, uh, the question of provincialization seems uh, to be no less relevant. After all, the Indian authors himself admit that uh, his book uh, has stimulated interest not only in other non-European countries, but also in other European within Europe itself. Europe is different, he clarified, when it comes to, I put, to the position of non-European immigrants and asylum seekers in Europe, or the question of Turkey's membership in the, in the um, EU, or the question of the place and the role of post-socialist Eastern Europe and occupation. Actually, this question became uh, very topical, it, uh, and it seems to me. And um, uh, for instance, uh, one of, of the scholar Lars Jensen notes that uh, provincialization of Europe also means provincialization within Europe itself. And uh, he, uh, he speaks especially of the provincialization of Scandinavia, especially after, um, uh, after uh, 1013. His idea is that there is no single European historiography, but rather different responses to modernization, colonialism, and nationalism in different countries and regions within Europe itself. And at the same time, of course, we, we know and uh, on the outskirts of Europe, uh, which were not recognized as the center, as the core of the West as well, um, uh, we can see the struggling for the right to belong to the universal, as it's called, European culture. Ukrainian also has um, had to fight for the right to belong to full-fledged European countries, as it was called, throughout the whole 20th century or even, even, even uh, uh, earlier. The West uh, constructed, actually, it, um, the uh, Ukrainian as well, as it, the, as it others that located uh, between Europe and Asia. The 20th century uh, was particularly marked by the struggle of Ukrainian intellectual and politician to be part, to, to be recognized as a part of European modern history and to enter in this European um, history and European uh, historiography narratives. Uh, for another representative of the colonial theory, for instance, like Walter Mignona, um, the moving beyond the Western canon can be understood in terms of detachment from, from, he, um, from his uh, canon uh, through, as he called it, uh, border thinking. And border thinking, um, according to Mignola, is thinking is an epistemology of the exteriority, that is, of the outside created from the inside, confrontation. 
Actually, the recent growth of interest to border thinking is evidenced by the interest in the idea of provincialization, which enable the decentralization, or actually question the um, universal Eurocentric, Eurocentric narratives. Um, I would like to quote it just to remind you about um, the, the, the idea, the notion of uh, Serhii Plohi, um, historian Serhii Plohi, who argues that I put Europe is an important part of Ukrainian uh, history, just as you see this um, uh, picture, this um, uh, Tikhroborty, and Serhii Plohi, who um, I see um, uh, who says that Europe is an important part of Ukrainian history, just as Ukraine is an important part of European history. And actually, he added the argument that uh, I quote located on the, on the western edge of the Eurasian steppe, Ukraine has been the gateway to Europe for many centuries. And quotation. Moreover, it is, I put, the result of the interaction of two moving borders, one between the Eurasian steppes and the Eastern European for a step in the other between Eastern and Western Christianity. Actually, that gives this Ukraine, that give Ukraine a unique place in the European history. Actually, provincialization, particularly with, with it emphasized on the revision of the dominant Western canon of history and culture, which has gained popularity and is very, um, it's, it's actually, it um, uh, um, reflects the experience, especially in the third world countries as well, a post-colonial aspect, may seem irrelevant to Ukraine, uh, but uh, I think that it is not. Since the Enlightenment, um, if you call, for instance, uh, recall Larry Wolf, Europe has been op uh, opening up its Eastern European outskirts, orientalizing them and perceiving them as its other. The classification of Ukraine as a non-historical and stateless nation implicitly means that Ukraine has not undergone modernization in its Western version and has been rele relegated to the margin of European civilization. I'm a literary scholar, for me it's very interesting, many, this discussion, this question of, of the literary modernism, or cultural modernism, for instance, or um, uh, can we speak, for instance, only about one uh, European modernism, or can we speak about many European modernism as well? So this question is also um, uh, linked to the, uh, to the idea of uh, provincialization and, and decolonization as well. Um, uh, as Mikhail Ryabchuk has, has noted throughout the 20th century, I quote, Ukraine has been desperately trying to, recon to, conven to convince itself in the world that, is, that it is Europe not, uh, and not Russia or not Asia. Belonging into Europe and the European geocultural space is one of the most powerful idea of national self-identification in Ukraine. However, this does not eliminate the criticism of Eurocentrism that can be read in the history of intellectual and political thought in Ukraine and are echoed in the ideas of uh, such a Ukrainian um, uh, leader and uh, cultural um, activist and uh, famous um, cultural um, uh, uh, authors like Pantelei Monkulish, Kuturna Philosophia, or Mykola Khvilovi, Asiatic Renaissance, or Yuri Shelev, Sherek, Shevelov, Parakunke Zevropoyu, or even Yuri Andrukovich, uh, Eastern European Revision. And of course, the other historiosophical ideas, a concept. So this only means that the colonization and provincialization, which is much discussed today, uh, has its own prehistory in Ukraine. I'm going to talk today about how the idea of provincialization is echoed in the ideas of 20th century Ukrainian intellectual, in particular Mykola Khvilovy and Yuri Shevelov. This is one hand, and also I will try to compare the nationalistic and decolonial conception of Eurocentrism, of critique of Eurocentrism and decolonization um, uh, 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 that are represented by Volodymyr Yanyev and Yuri Shevelov's conceptions. Uh, Mykola Khvilovy uh, um, is a prominent Ukrainian writer and publicist, the leader of the Ukrainian cultural renaissance of the 1920s, uh, was the author of the um, slogan Away from Moscow, and also two very important concept for understanding uh, the colonial theory in Ukraine, especially psychological Europe and Asiatic renaissance. 
They are a mirror of the author's anti-colonial position in the literary debate of 1925-1928 about the way of developing post-revolutionary Ukrainian literature on the one hand and the way of modernizing the national culture on the other. Falovi's slogan away from Moscow aimed at breaking with the tradition of Russian culture, which he identifies at this time with Christian dualism and inheriting Slavophilism. Falovi argues that due to the absence of the real bourgeoisie, Russian culture was enabled to create how it called a positive attitude towards the world. Uh, hints is Russian, <coughs> Russian breath with Russians longing here, hence, it's inherited pessimism, as philosophers as Falovey persisted. In fact, uh, the entire polemics, polemical pathos of the Ukrainian critics is aimed at defending the right of Ukrainian literature to develop its own national tradition, moving in the direction not of Russia, but of psychological Europe. As Falovey state, I quote, I, I quote, uh, by, by Europe, we mean not only technical achievement, but also most important uh, uh, psychological category, a certain type of cultural factor in the historical process, a certain revolutionary method. Thus, in his cultural vision, Falosovsky to, turned to the ideal category of psychological e Europe. He considered this type of the social individual, who, uh, who I quote, is the properly of all classes as this, and uh, as this um, determining factor. Among the representatives of this top, uh, where we see, for instance, the Roman Emperor Augustus, Voltaire, as well as Marx, Luther, Babel, Faust, and summarily following Oswald Spengler, of course, concept of Faust in European culture, defining them through uh, put, the European intellectual in the best sense of the word. He also identified Faust with the soft state, that is the class factor, the birth of the bourgeoisie and its romantic impulse of the storm and drunk period. Psychological Europe in Fulvis understanding thus designated not only the ideal type of culture, but also act as a Marxist historical and social category. Calling himself a Westerner, Falovey simultaneously presents himself as an envoy of, envoy of Asia to Europe. I quote, Asia is, um, Asia is again entering the broad historical road, Falovey argues. The long millennia long rest of Eastern human materials is a period of accumulating of energy for the world universal task. And only this energy is able to lead Europe out of the civilizational period of the declining type of culture and of potation. For we himself defined his location as Eurasia, where he envisions um, I quote, the southeastern republic of communes, the heirs of a revolutionary movement which has nurtured a type of revolutionary conquistadors. From here, from the South Eastern Republic of Commune of Soviet Ukraine, this comes the renewal that Europe so much awaits. Uh, for, um, I quote, our Eurasia stands on the verge of two large territories, two energy, since we are the vanguard of the fourth cultural, cul hist cultural historical type, um, argues Falovey, referring, of course, to the Spengler's theory of a new cycle of European civilization that will come from, from, from um, uh, Asia and Siberia. Ukrainian, Ukraine has a special role to play in this historical mission to save Europe, which is experiencing its decay, according to Falovey. Uh, on this uh, geocultural map of Eurasia, uh, when we place, uh, place, uh, uh, it, uh, place Ukraine on the Eastern Asian Highway, he directly links the, the Asian Renaissance to Bolshevik Revolution and the spiritual and energy of Bolshevism. And he argued this, uh, that actually this, the young Soviet republics to which he includes Soviet Ukraine. It is Ukraine, according to Falovey, that is the South Eastern Republic of Communes. Um, in its step, it, 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 uh, it created this type of revolutionary conquistador or anarchist uh, that has uh, been nurtured in revolutionary battles. 
Um, it didn't look for this idea of an Asiatic, Asiatic Renaissance for all the spatters of the reviving East in consistently Western, like it was born in the West, Western. And um, in his basic concept and driving forces formed within European culture, European cultural um, uh, and philosophical thought and European tradition. Attributing himself to Asian conquistador, Fellowey admits that I put only the attitude uh, to, to, West, to, to the Westernism conveyed to us commanding haste. He denied endless similarities, it's also very important, between his Asiatic Renaissance and Eurasianist and, and Pan-Slavism. And I put Pan-Slavism led, led to an original East and an, ideal, and, uh, an idealistic messianism. Uh, but are we talking about the originality of Asia, fully we ask and argue against the, his critics? Indeed, the main point of the Asian Renaissance is not to seek Asia's distinct identity, but to construct it along the line of the Occidental one. For the dreams of, or dreams of conquistador of the Great East, capable of conquering the West and leading mankind on the path of communist revolution, but at the same time, he confesses that I quote Asian conquistadors are first of all Westerners. His reflection on Asia is vague and metaphysical. He identifies it either with the winds from Asia or with the Asian highway. His knowledge does not go beyond the boundary of the traditional Western concept of the East. The image of the new revolutionary Asia serves him as the other through which he tries to renew European culture and place Ukrainian literature in a pan-European context. Asiatic Renaissance is a powerful cultural and philosophical concept of Fulevi, which of course refers to, to his time and to his idea, to his, to his uh, belief in the blue commune as well. Uh, and it was undiscriminated by his contemporaries. Only in the period after, um, after the Second World War, this concept is reviving in discussion about the future of post-war Europe and Ukraine place in it. And especially among the professors and scholars associated with the Ukrainian Free University in Munich and in the intellectual circle of the displaced persons camp of the Ukrainian artistic movement, so-called MUR. Um, MUR was founded in 1945 by a group of Ukrainian artists, uh, um, writers and, and, and artists as well, in exile in the, disp in the displaced person camp, uh, first of all for publishing purpose, but also to fulfill a special mission, to develop it, to create a modern style Ukrainian mod uh, of Ukrainian culture and to create a kind of great literature. Uh, this period is, is very important in the history of Ukrainian culture, in Ukrainian history as well, in Ukrainian diaspora. It's very productive and creative in the sense of, of uh, literature, culture, uh, developing of philosophical, cultural and political ideas as well. So that for 20th century Europe was an object of desire and cultural ideal for many Ukrainian intellectuals. However, the situation in Europe changed dramatically after the Second World War, and the map of Europe borders and identity uh, change, of course changed. The so-called the crisis of European identity became man, ma, one of the main topics of political, cultural, philosophical discussion of the time. In 1946, an international conference, the European Mind, was held in Geneva, attended by such leading, with participation, such leading European intellectual philosophers like Albert Camus, George Lukács, Karl, Karl Barthes, Cass Jaspers, and others. Jaspers. In his speech in the conference, Jaspers asked, what is Europe? What is, uh, what is Europe's position in the change board? What can we expect from European self-consciousness? He views Europe not just geographically, but as a spiritual principle, a principle of the West, I quote him. Today, the center of gravity of Western market is moving away from Europe into the wide plain of America and Asia, he confessed. And at the time, he emphasized that Europe is today becoming aware by contrast of its peculiar character and thereby losing its absoluteness. At the same time, he emphasized that I quote, Europe can contain the holy places of the West, just as, there are, just as there are other holy places in China and India for the Asiatic world. End of quotation. The crisis of the European, European um, okay, I'm sorry. 
Um, the crisis of the European mind, or a new phrase of Europe decline is a post-war period, is linked to the process of decolonization that take, take place at the time, and um, uh, uh, some kind of uh, dis disenchantment with Eurocentrism. The situation introduced new geographical and epistemological fa factor in such a debate on Eurocentrism in the post-war period, and the Ukrainian trace is also present in these uh, debates. The concept of Occidentalism was formulated in Volodymyr Yanyev's dissertation, Psychological Foundation of Occidentalism, that was written in Munich in 1947-48, and devoted to, I quote, analyzing the concept of the West, or rather, the West's opposition to the East. Um, the concept of the, of the this is um, some information about Volodymyr Yanyev, and um, so Yaniv uh, states that the concept of the West is not clear, that the concept of Europe is fluid, and he points out that the term Europe has a double meaning. It is not an old heraldic place name, but also an imaginary, const imaginary constructed entity with I put, specific sensual and evaluating coloring. Thus, the West uh, becomes synonymous with all that was positive, and Western culture was identified with the pinnacle of the achievement of the human spirit, and he emphasized, and uh, what European culture was given the banner of superiority, monopoly, and uniqueness. To develop his idea, he, re he relies on the concepts of the people's uh, spirit, beginning with Herder's idea, um, and uh, ending with Wilhelm Wundt's uh, psychology of people and Volkens' psych psychology, which presented the people's spirit as a transindividual mental structure with spreading of a time within a given community gives rise to culture. Nietzsche, Don Sof's nationalism, racial theories, as well as will to power, uh, voluntarism as well, and, uh, and nationalism are also echoed in uh, Yaniv theory of psychological occidentalism. Uh, but actually, a Ukrainian perspective is the main horizon of expectation, and the European crisis in the post-war wars serve as the background of his conception. Is the eternal ideal of Europe our ideal or not, ask Yaniv? Uh, and he knows Ukrainian role in the spiritual life of the West will be different depending on whether our spirituality is identical or diametrically opposite to that of the West. In a quotation. Yaniv links the development of national consciousness in Ukraine with the idea of Occidentalism, since according to him, I quote, to overcome the crisis, it is necessary to establish the concept of the West as an ideal to which we should aspire. This accidentalism does not mean imitation, imitating the West, but constructing an ideal model of the West that can be incorporated to foster the European type of mentality in Ukraine. The idea of psychological occidentalism will help, will help distinguish Ukrainian identity from Russian identity. This is one of the main ideas of, of, um, of um, uh, theory by uh, Yanni. Uh, and, uh, and also it uh, can legitimize its mission to the East, because according to Yanni, uh, the spirituality of the East is I quote, fully formed and developing in the opposite direction. Actually, Yaniv concept is imbued with Eurocentrism and Messianism, to which the Ukrainian scholar had a nationalist and religious character. Um, and um, uh, it, is, uh, it is very, very important that in opposition to Yaniv and his nationalistic conception, um, he also see um, uh, Europe as one nation, and this idea is also very important for his conception. Um, uh, uh, Yuri Sherich, Yuri Sherich uh, develops his own idea of Occidentalism, um, and uh, um, when uh, Yaniv uh, refers to and mentions Donsov and has a Donsov influence, a uh, nationalism by Donsov, um, Shebelov refers to Khvalovy's idea. Yuri Sherich um, uh, Shevelov, uh, uh, is, was a prominent Slavic linguist and philologist, essayist, literary historian, and literary critics, uh, who was born in Kharkiv, so he lived under the Soviet time. And then he, um, he fled um, the Red Army Offensive and entered the Ukrainian Free University in Munich in 19. 
1946, uh, uh, where he defended his doctoral dissertation. He was also a leading figure uh, of the Ukrainian art movement. In 1947-48, Yuri Shevelyu was deeply interested in the problem of the West. In several publications, articles he analyzed the so-called crisis of Europe by addressing to famous British historian Arnold Toynbee, whose position he defended as a perhaps unconscious but a constant glorification of modern Western civilization. He questions Toynbee's theory, despite the fact that the British historian was recognized at the time as the greatest Ukrainian uh, European historian after the publication of the abridged sixth volume of Study of History in, in 1946 in his Civilization on Trial in 1948. In his critics of Toynbee, Shevelov resort to revision of the entire idea of the West. I put, there is not only one Western culture in the world. He argues, claiming that there is diversity of European national culture. From the point of view of this young decolonizing nation, he criticizes the idea of a crisis of Europe and refers to Western civil civilization as um, a kind of imperialistic. I quote, where Toynbee, uh, blinded with his national civilization, the civilization of the sister, since the end of the world, um, uh, he stressed, referring to the post-war decolonization movement, we say no, no, because right now the world is beginning to belong to us in our system. Um, General Shevelov characterized his position as a Ukrainian emigre as follows. Uh, we prefer to have, I put, we prefer to have the West as our ally, but in the end, our principal position is determined not by the position of the West, but by the destiny of our people and of votation. So he said Ukrainian immigration, the task of correct of correctly diagnosing the West disease. Uh, but at the same time, he rejects this deception uh, that he see in such cliched phrases um, that such as, I quote, Ukraine's belonging to Europe or, uh, I quote, the defense of European Christian civilization. So he wants to, uh, his idea was to, to diagnose the West disease and also to inscribe Ukrainian as a, as a nation, as with history, with this culture into this European, old European narrative. In response to this crisis of Europe, Shilov calls the Ukrainian to decolonize, uh, not, the, not to haggle like what against Europe, but to realize and develop their own Nasha Svoye, and thus save Europe, he said. For him, the crisis of European civilization is a process of decentralization, decolonization of Europe itself. Uh, Shivalov actually emphasized that when all centers decline, peripheries of his new national values, replace them and became new centers. In his decolonial apotheosis and messianism, which resembles the, the Pesci Krabarchi's idea of the provincializing, provincializing of Europe, enriched by Marxism also, Shevelov both criticized and referred to Toby. He rejected Toby as a politician and suggests that using his idea of challenge and response, um, actually, Toynbee argues in the study on history that civilization arises in response to a particular set of challenges caused by extraordinary difficulties. And she will see these challenges and these difficulties in the Ukrainian borderland location between Europe and Asia. I quote, um, here Toynbee seems to be telling us directly uh, that it is ridiculous for us to gargle against Europe versus, versus Asia, and even more so against Eastern European parodies of Europe, as well as unnatural for Ukraine to be in Moscow brotherly embrace uh, of its current objectively anti-European positions. The role we have is precisely that of a stone, which is not included in the structure of the West or in the structure of the East, and now we can become the cornerstone of a new building which will absorb everything from both sides, both society and culture. Beyond the West East opposition and the discourse of Eurocentrism, Shevelov, um, Shevelov uh, discovered how to, he called it non Western peoples of Asia. He was against neglecting, I put Mongols, Semites, and Finns, uh, pointing out that. Um, uh, I would, uh, uh, we talk about the Asian Renaissance, but at the same time, 
um, a wrinkle our nose at the sight of an Eastern person and quotation. Actually, his version of Ukrainian identity is based on the idea that Ukraine is is uh, uh, both uh, uh, Europe and Asia at the same time that it is its destiny is not only to be in Europe but also in Asia but also as you see he speaks about some particularity of Ukrainian uh, regarding in East and West as well. He also emphasized that uh, I put relation with Turkey, Iran, Japan, Georgia and Vietnam where neither a game nor a disgrace and he added Khvilovi knew this. So we have this reference to, to, to Khvilovi. And Shvilov uh, summarized that, uh, that uh, let us say right now that to, to be, uh, what Toynbee does not see, Khvilovi saw when he spoke of the Asian Renaissance. A Renaissance that takes all the best from Western society, that in this says continue Western society, but renew it is it's not yet historical spirit, a spirit that you really conditionally, purely conditionally baptize the name of the eternal person spirits. Actually, uh, Shevelyov referred to, to, to Yuri Lipa, one of Ukrainian also uh, philosopher and thinker, who tried to develop the idea of a special uh, special um, character of Ukrainian settlement and also refer to, to the idea of nomadism, to, to, to influence of steps south of Ukraine and um, develop this kind of eternal peasant spirit. Um, actually, the above mentioned conflict and position is the post for discussion of the European problems, the West, the idea of sedentaries, um, on the one of the fragment of a big Ukrainian intellectual history that was discussing the place of, of Ukrainian history and in relation to Europe as well. It revealed a certain continuity of historiosophical concept in their development during the first half of the 20th century from Filovy to Shevelyov. The inclusion of Ukrainian historiographical concept in contemporary post-colonial and decolonial discussion seems to me is a very particularly relevant issue today in each to, to further investigation. Ukrainian discussion about the fate of Europe and opposition to Eurocentrism open powerful cultural context. They have a historical and political character. They reflect the influence of the main ideology of their time, nationalism, and communism. Uh, they refer to Donsov and Fulovy as a maybe uh, uh, archetypal uh, figure of, of this uh, uh, ideology. Uh, this discussion touched on issues that became global at the end of 20th century, such as clash of civilizations, the role of the elite, critical Eurocentrism, and of course the colonization and provincialization issue. Um, to reveal uh, not only the, uh, they reveal not only the, the phases or some idea of Ukrainian national history in relation to the um, uh, all um, his, uh, European narratives and uh, political history of 20th century Europe, uh, but they also support, they also uh, confirm that Ukrainian intellectual had their own voice in this discussion. Thank you for your attention and I'm ready to, to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Really fascinating um, set of comments. Um, so, okay, so let me urge um, our guests and attendees to write any questions or comments you have in the Q&A if you are on Zoom and in the um, chat if you are joining us on, on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> okay, well, I have to admit this is a bit outside of my wheelhouse as a political scientist. Um, but I, I think that it's really important to contextualize this ongoing um, discussion that's so relevant for the formation of national identity today, especially in the post-2014 Ukraine. I mean, throughout, I mean, I think this really shows a lot of people the kind of longstanding um, engagement with the idea of Europe and the uniqueness um, of Ukraine or the, the, the kind of engagement with the East and West that um, has preoccupied Ukrainian intellectuals over the long durée. Um, and so for those of us who kind of come to the study of Ukrainian national identity in a post-1991 moment, um, it's very informative um, and, and um, gives much food for thought. So I want to thank you for that. Um, do you, would you like to comment at, at all upon, about um, one of the preoccupations of, you know, for better or for worse, political science, um, political scientists or, or social scientists, both in Ukraine and the West on 
uh, this idea of Ukraine as um, made up of regions. And if there's any kind of way in which the the kind of regional identity or regional background of intellectuals um, has informed their um, informed kind of their engagement with their ideas and their approach to understanding Europe? Or is that just another red herring? Should we not be at all concerned with the kind of um, um, social and intellectual milieu in which the particular um, thinkers that you focus on came from? Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to suggest that, you know, there's this, obviously, <laughs> I don't want to suggest this kind of sharp divide between East and South and West Ukraine. Um, and, and we know that there's you know, many, much European engagement in East Ukraine. But I just wanted to see if you, you have any thoughts on um, the kind of, you know, home region or home city of the intellectuals that you engage with since um, they come from, you know, so clearly one from Lviv and, and one from Kharkiv. Yeah. Thank you for, it's, it's maybe the main question. <laughs> um, and, uh, 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 what I would like to 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 give you and to um, uh, to to speak uh, of, uh, today um, is uh, is to give some historical perspective uh, going back to to the history of twentieth century and actually the Ukraine uh, became a Ukrainian intellectual uh, participated in this very global very influential discussion about the future of Europe actually. And um, and of course, um, uh, Shevelov and, and Yanyev and, and Felovi as well. In some way, uh, of course, they um, uh, they uh, they represent and they have in mind their national idea to, to develop Ukraine to become to give Ukraine to help Ukraine to be a modern nation, for instance, mm -hmm. to, to to be inscribed in his history in this. Uh, um, uh, European history as well, uh, uh, not, not like a, um, just a vi vi uh, victim, something like that, or, uh, or neighbor, but also like a participant of this, of this story as well. So, of course, it's, it has idealistic and utopian sometimes and romantic and ideological aspect. Or, um, uh, for instance, in, in Felovy, of course, we have, we feel this idea of uh, old proletarian revolution around the world as well. And uh, he, he, he was influenced by, by this idea and he, he used it also. He tried to, to give it his historiosophical um, uh, interpretation. Um, and also uh, this um, Shevelov and the other intellectual, intellectual who uh, after the Second World War, they, they actually, they, um, they appear in, in the middle of Europe. And uh, uh, their, um, their way back was ex actually impossible, became impossible. So they started, they need to, to, um, Mm, to adjust, to be adjusted to this new situation. So, and mm -hmm. um, and they saw uh, Riklozi immersed actually in this collision, in this discussion on the on the so called car crisis of Europe. So, in the, there was they started to participate in this in this uh, discussion, and it's, for me, it's very important. It doesn't mean absolutely that they the idea was um, was opposing to Europe, for instance, as well. Yeah, it's only is um, I mean this this uh, idea of provincialization of Europe does not does not mean the, the the changing or breaking with with Europe as well. But it is just a kind of uh, uh, of epistemological or historiosophical um, recreation of of the, of the historiosophical narrative or historical narrative or literary canon as well. Uh, so, um, uh, but um, uh, I um, I use this example of Shevelov and Yanyev, who represent actually two not only two two position, uh, but the, their background was different. Um, um, for instance, Yanyev uh, was born in Lviv. Uh, actually, they was born Shevelov and Yanyev. They were both born in in uh, nineteen o eight. Uh, one of them was born in Lviv, the other was born like Shevelov in Kharkiv. Uh, so they represent different traditions, different parts of, of, of Ukraine, you know. But what they are very interested, they are both are interested in this, um, creating this kind of uh, Ukrainian uh, Occidentalism. And um, of course, the, the background and it's, it's matter, yes, of course, for Shevelov, it was a Soviet kind of practice and Soviet um, experience because he was involved and he lived in the Soviet time in Kharkiv before the uh, World War uh, II. Uh, and um, Yanyev, he, 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 he lived in, in, um, uh, 
in Lviv. He was arrested and imprisoned uh, uh, by Nazi, and he also was influenced by by Dmitry Donsov. And then he 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 studies in in, the, uh, in Berlin in Germany. So, uh, but both this position actually um, is very interesting because, as as I, as I um, uh, stress, they all uh, speaks about Europe. They all cannot see uh, Ukraine without Europe. Or they don't want to oppose. But nevertheless, this um, this uh, background, this historic historical background, of course, um, plays play some role in the understanding of of uh, this um, um, place of in. Um, in this discussion about Europe. And, um, uh, you know, it seems to me, um, even now, when we, for instance, we are talking about contemporary time, because, uh, as I told you, this is only one fragment of many interesting historiosophical um, uh, discussion on, uh, about the uh, um, national identity, national, national spirituality, Ukrainian spirituality, uh, for instance, that sometimes uh, stress the kind of nomadic character of step Cossacks, for instance, uh, uh, past of Ukrainian as well, or the difference uh, between the West and the East of Ukraine and different tradition and, and belonging to different empires as well. Uh, but um, uh, uh, we, we, we can see now that we can speak about this, that Ukraine, of course, is a part of this, uh, this situation uh, where this globality, global and local uh, unite. So and actually, in this discussion, it seems to me, it's very important that we, hey, we, we can, uh, this discussion actually um, echoes um, the idea of a contemporary post-colonial, decolonial, post-colonial movement and post-colonial thinking as well. This is mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, read the questions. And actually, Tamara, if you don't want to refer to your slides anymore, then I suppose you could stop sharing yeah, screen. I, I still, yeah, I still, yeah, we'll... yeah, 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 sure. So, okay, yeah. Oh, great. Okay. great. Okay, thanks. So now we have a comment question from Wales Brown. Um, Pilori's ideas sound similar to the Russian Eurasianism that is associated with Trubetskoy and others in the early 20th century, did he, in fact, learn from them and adopt some of their ideas? I don't call oh, sorry, her. sorry. All right. Okay. If you want to answer... Um, if yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is very, very interesting. One of the of, uh, very interesting question, of course. Um, uh, of course, we can see and and we know uh, and uh, uh, we can see this some some uh, parallel uh, parallel and uh, some uh, ideas that uh, uh, reminds uh, remind um, us um, about Eurasianism and and Eurasianism as well. Um, uh, but um, uh, uh, and uh, I would say that uh, actually Fulovy was influenced by by this philosophy. It seems to me, starting from the beginning of twentieth century, Russian philosophy as well. Um, uh, but um, uh, his idea was because uh, his idea was to to uh, to break with this tradition as well. And he and he actually stressed that his idea was not to to uh, to emphasize not to not to to outline the speciality of Eurasia as as such, for instance, yes, uh, but uh, just to 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 show that um, that a new kind of uh, spirituality of but revolutionary spirituality. Not, not in a sense of Russian Eurasians, and um, they speak about special spirit of Eurasia, like uh, identity, like that opposed to to Russia itself and to, to Europe as well, but is taken from 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 Asia, from Siberia or Mong Mongols, for instance. Yeah. So in this say in this way in this aspect, this uh, this um, idea and this conception are absolutely different. Um, my main idea for uh, for Lviv was, was, of course, the development of Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian national culture, and to develop and to bring a new kind of um, a new kind of energy of vitality, uh, because one of his idea was romantic of vitalism, and um, uh, he, of course, uh, like a Russian Eurasianist and uh, Lviv, they were. Or was influenced by Spenglers, of course, the main sources for, for their uh, um, conception 
conception was um, taken from from uh, Spendler's and uh, Chevalier uh, confess and very often he refers to Spendler as well. And um, so it's, uh, it's it's very interesting it's uh, to to look further and to analyze uh, similarity and differences between the two two kind of conception as well. So it's absolutely very it's needs to be to be discovered and to be analyzed uh, further. Yeah. Uh, thank you. And uh, now we have a question from Emma Mateo, who is a postdoctoral fellow in Ukrainian studies here at Harman Institute. Um, to, she asks, to what extent has Russia's war in Ukraine influenced these kinds of discussions? There seems to be a stronger discourse about Ukraine as belonging to Europe in opposition to Russia and a framing of the invasion as a European war. Yeah. Uh uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a part of my book. Uh, I work, I work uh, uh, on, the, on my on this book uh, um, maybe ten years. So it started not 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 now, absolutely. So and um, um, of course, it's uh, um, when I look uh, as, uh, as I told the lady, I I was interested in history of twentieth century, especially. Um, uh, starting in this idea of uh, orientalization and occidentalism. And um, I try to, you know, the idea of, Occident of Occidentalism is very popular and actually we have actually, uh, it's the uh, whole field of, of Orientalism, uh, Syria, uh, in different aspects, in different conceptions as well. Um, that, that was born in the post-colonial um, uh, countries and was uh, developed by, by, by post-colonial and the colonial uh, theorists. Uh, so, um, in some way, uh, we can see also some similarity between uh, Occidentalism, and we're talking Ukrainian, this variant, and also the uh, variants that we, we, we have around the world. Uh, but um, uh, uh, I would, I would, for instance, uh, 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 stress and would like to stress that um, it is not kind of occidentalist like uh, in the famous book by Bruma and uh, I forgot the name. The other name that that actually is a very um, anti-Western, anti-European like um, position. Um, as it has a very anti-European like position because for uh, for the for Ukrainian who represent this, this who created this kind of occidentalist in the middle of 20th century uh, they they don't have such a feeling at all it was absolutely different uh, they have such a kind of resentment to, to, toward Europe as well so it is very very important. So and I uh, for me because I I'm mean interested in the colonial postcolonial uh, theory and thinking and I work in this field so um, I try to 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 use and to compare uh, this uh, um, kind of this new uh, theory that developed in the um, in regard of occidentalism in, in in different country in different region as well and to compare with Ukrainian because in some way um, I see that uh, they all. Um, uh, has this kind of uh, of uh, uh, of the colonial anti-colonial uh, uh, idea? They, they bring this idea. Uh, but uh, recently, for instance, it, it is very important because we have this uh, the difference the difference between uh, this this different between uh, occidentalism that developed um, uh, in the middle of the twentieth century in by Ukrainian intellectual and contemporary um, orientalism uh, Syria um, uh, became uh, became uh, became uh, uh, actually uh, with the start of contempt of uh, Russian uh, Ukrainian war uh, start um, uh, to be. Uh, uh, revealing uh, very 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 much. For instance, I was I was um, uh, struck by the fact that um, uh, Walter Mignola he published recently his interview where he says that actually um, all 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 the colonial movement uh, and was was um, was directed against Eurocentrism and actually uh, the process of devastation of the world and making a a multipolar um, vision of the world uh, became obvious, but now with the beginning of the war in Ukraine, uh, um, the, uh, this, this process stopped and now we see the uh, element of re revesternization as well, that demonstrates this position Ukraine in the West toward Ukraine. So uh, actually for me personally, it's, it's true that 
uh, we have to be careful, careless and careful when we took uh, uh, the idea, the theoretical idea taken from the other context, historical, cultural as well. When we take it and, and we and we use it for the other context, for instance, like in Ukraine. So, um, uh, so it seems to me this this aspect, this this idea, is 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 need to be to be also to be to be to be developed. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, could you repeat what, um, the intellectual or the person that you were reading that was referring, that you just referred uh, to? Mignola, Vol Walter Mignola. Oh, Walter Mignola. okay, thank you. Actually, he, he said I had his uh, uh, citation, which I just uh, uh, didn't put, but uh, he says that uh, um, uh, uh, he consider actually he consider Russia to be one of the so called uh, uh, countries along with China, Iran, as well in India and Turkey, which are balancing I quote on the edge between two worlds and uh, uh, and so so uh, he he continue actually this anti Western and anti Western anti um, anti Euro Eurocentrist idea and refers to contemporary situation and position of Russia, China, and the others. So mm -hmm. it's 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 through it's demonstration how how um, how hot this question became now it, it's it's really interesting also this this point about being careful about applying yeah. ideas from one historical moment yeah. um, and sort of seeing a continuous through line because it seems like there's a lot of in popular thought and popular cultural emphasis on legacies from the past mm. and you know there's always of course, we talk about Soviet legacies a lot, but in terms of intellectual history, there's a lot of um, te temptation to see a, a continuous through line in um, Ukrainian intellectual thought. And it's, you know, it's interesting when you were talking about resentment of Europe that some of these intellectuals have, because you do hear, at least I did in some of my public opinion research, um, some expressions prior to 2022 about resentment of uh, the great powers or resentment even of Europe. And yet it coexists with this among other Ukrainian citizens with this, you know, desire to be European or part of European institutions. And it's really, it's really interesting. I found in my own research, like a, this tension really fascinating. Um, and, and I wonder the degree to which it's, um, it's sort of, dissipated since the war, since there is this kind of need for technical and financial reliance on Europe. But, um, but you know, whether th those kinds of ideas um, are sort of there for a long time um, and, so and where they came from. So I at least this has been really stimulating for me to think about the kind of intellectual legacies of, of these kinds of attitudes toward Europe versus attitudes toward um, not just Russia, but the rest of the world, the rest of the world um, with various Ukrainians embracing them or feeling uncomfortable in, about the the idea of, of Ukraine is in between. Anyway, I'm rambling a bit, but it's just really thought provoking. And um, I, I want to thank you for um, may, may, may I comment as well? Please. You know, when we're, yeah, when we're talking about uh, the war and contemporary situation, of course, mm -hmm. The idea, the the idea of belonging to the Europe and uh, to be part of the Europe be, became became much stronger and became became obvious. For instance, for all Ukrainian, because without mm -hmm. Europe, we cannot imagine our uh, the future of Ukrainian as well. And we see also how how active European countries as well in the EU, how how active and how actively helped Ukrainian to overcome this uh, uh, in the sense of mi military help as well and humanitarian as well. So it's. It's, it's amazing. So actually, uh, now we see, it seems to me, when the Europe, uh, uh, and starting from this war, we see that Europe uh, became more open for Ukrainian as well, and Europe became understand Ukrainian much more, much more. And it is very also important because uh, we have now this, uh, this this situation of a dialogue between Ukrainian and, and Europe as well, you know, uh, and not, not only, so Ukrainian became actually the subject of, of this 
this relationship as well. So and 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 this is this is very important. But but um, at the same time, of course, um, and actually this discussions that I try to 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 um, uh, to, to to show you to to demonstrate. Um, uh, shows that, of course, each of country has their own um, uh, of interests as well and their own tradition as well. And what what the European Union uh, uh, is uh, is uh, important because it gives this possibility to to develop the uh, peculiarity of each countries as well. Yes, and it is very 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 important because Ukraine, in some way, somebody called it a, um, a new a new nation. So something like that, like what a new nation, but but nevertheless. So that is on the, his way to, de, to 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 democracy, to modernization, to uh, to to freedom as well. And um, as we see now, the Ukrainian became like uh, on this four post or something like a very very vital sources uh, of uh, that brings in you and or that brings new spirit and new new energy as well to the Europe it, itself. So and actually, this is the idea that resonates is. Uh, something that was uh, uh, and and uh, uh, and uh, uh, special Shevelov tried to 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 express as well. So uh, it's, it's it seems to me it's very very important to keep in mind this this aspect as well this context. Mm, that's really interesting. Yeah, this kind of echo of this. Yeah. yeah. Right, then that's a big shift. I would say even from twenty twenty two, this idea of the yes, dialogue yeah. Yeah, yeah. with Europe and the and the kind of what Ukraine can teach or offer to Europe, yeah. which is something that you didn't really hear after 2014 so much, but now it's definitely mm-hmm. part of the part of the discourse. That's really interesting, and 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 there there's there's a and you can find it in the earlier thought of Ukrainian thinkers as well. Well, thank you. For that insight and um, the many rich ideas associated. Could you tell us just a little bit more about the book project and um, how your uh, talk today is situated in the larger book project and, and when we might expect, um, <laughs> I don't want to ask the any kind of question with pressure, but you know, yeah, but because I, 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 I now I, I teach here, so and I understand that it is not easy to, to combine. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, but um, this is this, uh, this book actually uh, this chapter of this book uh, will be uh, dedicated to to uh, to this occidentalism, this idea, and also the idea of Europe, not only in in uh, in this kind of discussion, but the literature itself that was created because uh, actually this is in in post-war war periods is um, one of the best in, in the main Ukrainian modernist texts were created and written actually in Munich and published in Munich in mean Munich as well and the idea of euro became a part actually of even 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 the um, uh, uh, context that was discussed in, in in this text as well uh, and I refer for instance to Viktor Petrov who is a historian of and he also used this idea of c- uh, different c- historical cultural epochs as well so this idea of uh, of um, Toynbee and and Spen as well because we can very very important at that time so this is one of a, especially Chevelo because um, I, I I plan to work uh, far, uh, more with Chevelo and maybe even to prepare a book especially about Chevelo, and um, so this is my, my my idea. And the other was uh, will dedicated to uh, uh, chapter Chevelovi uh, uh, and uh, um, Asiatic Renaissance, but also um, a kind of orientalization of uh, Kharkiv because uh, he speaks about Kharkiv, he uh, in collision between the city and the steppe as well. This is also a kind of, it's it's one of the idea of Khvelovi's uh, um, uh, writing, Khvelovi's uh, um, uh, 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 cultural sophy as well. So, and um, it was also very important for me to, to, to look at this aspect. So it's, uh, and, and yeah, this is my, my idea, yeah. Very interesting. Okay, well, we will, Look forward to that in the future. Yeah. I think everyone is um, struggling to not only balance teaching and, yes, and yeah. intellectual work of our own interests, but trying to keep up with the war and the news cycle surrounding the war, which is just so um, difficult and emotionally draining. 
Yeah. Um, okay. Actually, great. I was going to I was going to mention this. A question from Wales Brown about Chevalier. When he was at Columbia University, he taught linguistics, and Slavis in the U.S. thought of him as primarily a linguist, though we knew he was also the editor of Sushasnist. But did he continue to be important as a cultural scholar? And and wasn't Chevalier the reason that we had Ukrainian language taught at Columbia University? so long ago in the 1940s, which was one of the first places that had Ukrainian. That's my own. Yeah. 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 Sure. Well, yeah. It's very, uh, it's very important, you know, um, um, to discover, to discover Shuvalov also like um, uh, European, like um, uh, European uh, cultural Sofia and, and Sienker as well. He was a, a famous um, uh, uh, linguist, famous linguist, and he 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 taught at Columbia University, you know, and um, and his archives is already it seems to be his part his partially or maybe all of his archives archives now in at Columbia and uh, was given to Columbia University to archives of Columbia University. And um, but he also very beautiful, he was also excellent essayist as well, and his essay. Uh, they, they, they like a window in the life of uh, um, of uh, of Europe and U of Ukraine and also into discussion. Actually, his essays and his uh, articles uh, they come they they combine. So he he developed his idea not only in the special uh, text dedicated to uh, that had polemical or informational character, but also in the in his essay as well, which is also very very important. And it seems to me, uh, unfortunately. Um, Ukrainian needs to me, and we needs we needs also to open to open our our past, to open our um, our big heritage that we have, and especially uh, Shevelov, Shevelov, Shevelov uh, works and Shevelov figure as well. So it's very very important to 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 have and to 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 study. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. Yeah, and it's it's important for the kind of institutional um, history of Ukrainian studies yes, at Columbia, yeah, yeah. Uh, which we're trying to bring a little more attention to this in a, as an institute. Um, and um, so that's uh, that's something that I think a lot of the um, the people and scholars associated with um, Columbia and Harriman Institute would be interested to hear to learn more about Shevelyov. Um, in addition to his work as a linguist. So um, I, I wanna just ask if you have any final comments or if anyone in the audience has any final comments. Um, it's been a, already, although it's quite early, it's been a, a long day for Professor Hondorova because she already taught her class today in the morning. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to you know, belabor or ask you to do extra labor here. Oh, and she's coming to New York for the NCs conference at NYU on Saturday, um, and, and there will be a, um, a panel on um, Ukrainian literature and Ukrainian studies, or more than one, at that conference, so um, she's got a, a lot of work ahead of her this weekend, <laughs> um, and, and this is this has already been a, a very long discussion, but if anyone, I don't want to cut off the discussion, so if anyone has any final questions, now is the time, um, and if not, then um, I would I would again like to thank um, Tamara for a really fascinating um, and and really new, uh, at least for me personally, um, um, set of insights. And we look forward to your book, to your future work. Um, and thank you. So for, for giving me this opportunity to share my thought, because you know it's very important to have to 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 share you know, with them. And it stimulates and uh, mm. gives give the desire to work, to work uh, further and to continue. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for your. Thank, for the, you. thank you for the question. Fun. Thank you for for to all for being with me. Thank you. Thank you, and um, thanks to our audience members for coming today. Um, and then I will just mention that um, this will be recorded and it'll be posted on Harriman Institute's website. Well, a link to the um, talk will be posted on our YouTube channel and that we have more events coming up. And if you're not on the Harriman Institute list um, or the Ukrainian Studies program list, um, you are welcome to 
um, email me or really any anyone at Harriman Institute and we will add you to our listserv. So thanks again. Thanks to Eileen for organizing and keeping things running smoothly. Thank you, Tamara, and I hope you um, can get some rest today before coming to New York this weekend. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> okay. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.